Dr. von Franz, uh, can you explain the concept of the personal shadow and the collective shadow? Well, they, in practical life, they merge, but the personal shadow is the personal shortcomings of uh, things which every human being could be conscious of, which is not archetypal and therefore not a mystery. For instance, such things as greed for money or jealousy. Jealousy is one of the main <laughs> aspects of the shadow or laziness, sloppiness, uh, unrelatedness, sentimentality and whatnot. Inferiorities which everybody has but uh, prefers not to know about. Mm -hmm. And because we generally strive through education and through environmental pressure to be a bit better than we actually are. Or we have our own ideals. I oughtn't to be jealous. I oughtn't to have a power complex. And, but you see, for instance, that in criminals, they sometimes live their inferiority. And then they have a personal shadow which is noble. They mm -hmm. dream about noble people, and it's just reversed. They live, so to speak, their mean side, and, and then they have a, a, a positive shadow. And therefore, even in a, what is more the average truth, the, the inferior shadow is not really bad. It's just human, all too human. Mm -hmm. And something one could know about, if one is jealous or if one is suddenly possessed by wanting money or so on, one, well, one could know about it if one is honest with oneself. But the collective shadow has to do with the dark side of the archetype of the self. That means it's the shadow of the God image. In the Christian tradition, it would be the devil. Mm -hmm. And that has always been personified and felt as something which has not to do with directly with the human being. I mean, if somebody is possessed by the devil, he's much worse than just He's not human, he, it's demonic. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but on the other hand, generally that merges. First you have this area of uh, dim, dark side, and behind it lurks the other. I've, for instance, seen that when Germany went to the devil in na Nazism, people fell into it through their personal shadow. For instance, they didn't want to lose their job because they were clinging to money. That was their personal shadow, but then they joined in with the Nazi movement for that reason and did much worse things than they would have done normally under normal social conditions. So you can say the personal shadow is the bridge to the collective shadow or the open door to the collective shadow, but the collective shadow comes up in those terrible mass psychoses. Well now, if a person becomes more aware of then the he, personal shadow... Then that's why it's so tremendously important because then you don't fall into the collective shadow. Mm -hmm. There's not that um, automatic there's link. There's not that uh, open, it's like if you have your, a room and there's one door on a shut and mm -hmm. there the devil can come in. Mm -hmm. And if you know your personal shadow you can shut all the doors. Mm -hmm. So for And example, then you don't join in into mm -hmm. massacres and holocausts and such you catch yourself and you, you can catch stop. yourself and you realize mm -hmm. that, and, and you can keep out of it mm -hmm. and keep reasonable keep your head while the, the average person who has doesn't know about her, her personal shadow they get swept away by the collective evil mm -hmm. is it possible to speak of a shadow in terms of national identity a, a shadow in switzerland a shadow in the united states Yes, okay. naturally. Mm -hmm. The summing up of uh, every society has its ideals and lives up to those ideals mm -hmm. and has also a shadow. Mm -hmm. The average American has a typical shadow and the average Swiss has a typical shadow, which mm -hmm. is slightly different. Mm -hmm. But there again, you can say the more individuals in a nation know about their shadow, the, the better that nation is off or less likely to fall into a mass psychotic, destructive, sweeping away movement where people lose every measure, you know, I mean, just kill their relatives, kill thousands of people without even having a bad conscience about it. It's real, just madness. Mm -hmm. Is um, 
the analytic process, um, the only way of, of coming to terms with the shadow or becoming aware of it. Are there other ways for, for individual people to become aware? I don't know aware? if it is the only way, but it's the only way I know. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, the, to see one's own shadow is such a painful thing that you will never do it honestly in a group. You mm -hmm. can't admit such painful little secrets. So all the official confessions people make in groups, oh, I'm jealous, or oh, I'm childish, are just words. They cover up when it comes to the really painful spots. Even the analyst has to be very tactful and, and very treading on dangerous ground and looking out of the window and, you know, because it's the other is wincing under his realization of his inferiority. Mm -hmm. And so he needs a man to human being to human being situation to help the other to become aware of his shadow. Mm -hmm. And you can't do it in a big mm -hmm. sweep. It's the individual connection, though, it's that is so important. It's the individual connection which is decisive. Uh -huh. Because you can't stand your shadow when you are alone. You just collapse. Uh -huh. You need a human being to hold your hand when you go uh -huh. into that dangerous area. Uh -huh. And if there's a group, you slide out, kind of. You, you slide out or you make general. You know, like in the Oxford groups, everybody said, I'm greedy of money, I drink too much. Uh -huh. And they didn't mean it. Uh -huh. It's in the personal relationship that it becomes so awkward. Uh -huh. And then you are pinpointed, and then it becomes an indelible shock to see your own shadow. And then then you have it, then you really know it. You can't forget it again the next morning. Well, doesn't that also happen in long-term friendships or marriages that oh, you know, yes. you're kind of up against oh, yes. the wall, oh, faced yes. with it? All close relationships are, uh, in a way, analytical relationships. It, it is a, an, because it simply means a relationship in which both partners try to become conscious by exchanging mm -hmm. Each with, each with each other, sharing each other's fate. There seems to be uh, around the around marriage a kind of uh, uh, avoidance and aversion now. So divorce is so easy, and it, it's happening at least in the states that people don't stay married very long. So they, they in a way, they, are they running from the shadow? Do you think they are running from either from the shadow or very often from animus and anima. That's the big complication between the sexes. Mm -hmm. If you live with somebody of the same sex, it's the shadow gets constellated. If you live with somebody of the other sex, then the bigger task comes. That's why it's the more valuable relationship, because it's the, also the bigger task, mm -hmm. because that constellates anima and animus. And as the average American nowadays doesn't know yet what that is. Mm -hmm. Whenever animus and anima clash, they run, run apart. It's finished. They throw it over. If they stuck it out, they would learn a lot about themselves. That doesn't mean that we are not sometimes uh, for divorce. There are situations you better think of a divorce. There are relationships where both partners become destructive to each other, mm -hmm. plainly destructive. Mm -hmm. And then it is better to, to make a, a final decision. But there are others where it's just a clash of animus and anima, and if they could become conscious, they could get on again. Mm 